We're preaching from the book of St. Matthew this All morning. Right. Amen. We're going to the 28th verse. Amen. Yeah. 28th chapter, excuse me. That's it, that's it, that's it. And in the 28th chapter, yeah. we're going to look at verse number 16. Yeah. We're going to tell the story. Tell it, tell it. Of his morning glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The 16th chapter, uh, 16th verse says, went away, where? Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. 17 says, and when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Oh Lord. 28 and 18 says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Bless God's word. We're going to talk this morning from this subject. The champion of the cross. Amen. He's the champion. Amen. God fix you today. In the name of Jesus. Ask God to touch right now. Right now. Yes, Understanding yes, all over everywhere. Yes. Because we're in a needed time. Yes. Yes. And we come against Satan. Yes, in the name of yes, Jesus. Yes. Anything of hindrance, we bind it up right now. Yes. In your name. Amen. 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 In this evil world. Yes. We Christians yeah. are faced with a host of opponents. Yeah. And all of these opponents are arch enemies of the cross. All right. And arch enemies of the one who is champion of the cross. It's all right, thank you, Lord. Jesus the Christ. Yeah. The cross of Calvary, yeah. if you look at it at this point, is the insignia. Mm -hmm. Yes. The honor. Preach. It symbolizes our cause of salvation. All right. Now the Christian, as always throughout history, has had to face these foes. We've always had to face them. As a part of our faith and our background in Christ. We've had to face the foes because we took part in, in claiming the cross of Calvary. All right. And the kingdom for which it stands. Yeah. We've had to face foes like racial injustices, yes. uh -huh. economical injustices, uh -huh. injustices and religious inequality. Yes. Uh -huh. The Christian has always had to stand against those foes. And so today, we devote this message to the one who gave life for a life of many. The Bible says he gave his life a ransom and a sacrifice for us today. Today we commemorate the day that Jesus defeated the champion of the old rugged cross. And he defeated the death that the cross stood for. Uh -huh. On a hill, yeah. far away. Oh, In doing so, we acknowledge his championship and his victory over the cross. Y'all with me? Yeah. This was a death match. Uh -huh. Jesus stepped forward victorious. He was a champion. Yeah. 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 Now, let me tell you this. Only those who can defeat his opponent, mm -hmm. the only one who can do that, and the one who can defeat all the, the, the opponent's adversaries and help, can claim championship. That's I told you this was a death match. Mm -hmm. The champion cannot be the one that succumbs to death. All right. Death is the accompanying of Satan. And is a sign of Satan's victory. Uh -huh. yes. So Jesus had to prove himself champion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
throughout history, that I take a look at it, the human race have always needed a champion. Yeah. Y'all with me? A champion of causes. A champion of cases that were imminent and immediate threats to both health and well-being. But above all, we have always needed a champion over the threat of our salvation. We needed Jesus. Well, I'll tell you this. There's always been a problem within this needing a champion. Stick with me here. The need of a champion has always been second-guessed. There's a problem of deception and insincerity in the need of the champion. This is why. The human race has not even felt the need of a champion's defense until that was an immediate threat. When it loomed with danger, we wanted a champion. When it had something to do with our personal safety, we needed a champion. But soon as the cause had been championed. Yeah. We forgot about the champion. Yeah. Yeah. Because we no longer felt we needed the champion anymore. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. God has a way. Yeah. <clears throat> every dilemma that we have ever had. Every disaster that we have ever faced. Every catastrophe and every tragedy that has ever befallen us. Society and all the people of this world, as soon as it was championed, seemed as though they got worse uh -huh. since the championship has occurred. Uh -huh. And have gone about to forget about obeying God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Forgot about the punishment that comes because of our disobedience. Yes. Have forgotten to serve God continuously. Great. God. The Father, God the Son. Mm -hmm. As soon as it gets through working for us, we won't forget Him. Now you see, looking back on that day, the cross of Calvary and all of its accomplishments had been completed. In other words, the sin debt had been paid with and only with the blood of Christ. Nobody else could pay it. Nobody else's blood was without sin except Christ. Christ had defeated sin in the flesh. Don't tell me we can't defeat it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Satan and death both have been defeated. At the cross and at the tomb. Christ has been resurrected. Yeah. Which, by the way, guarantees a resurrection for all of us who believe too. All right, amen. Death no longer reigns supreme. Yes, Why? Because the death of the grip of death has been broken. Yes, you know what? Jesus come out of his hands. Uh -huh. You heard the song say, Death could not hold him down. And Jesus lives again. I read a scripture that said that Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus. Yes, if God raised him up, he's going to raise us up. He's going to raise up us who believe. We're guaranteed a resurrection in Christ Jesus. That's why I got to have him. We look in the middle of all these fears and doubts. Christ went on to prove who was a champion over all things. Principalities and power. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Over the rules of darkness. Of all degrees. The scribes, the Pharisees, Herod and Pilate. That everybody was so afraid of. All of them were just servants of God, yeah. the living God. Brief, brief. But they were servants who had not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Yeah. They all thought they 
were accomplishing their plans. Mm -hmm. They thought it was bringing about the success of the plan. I don't know. But when all the time they were accomplishing the access of our salvation. Thank you, Lord. And fulfilling the Holy Scriptures. Wounded mm -hmm. for our transgression. Yeah. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And, by, and with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. Somebody need to tell the answer. With his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Easter time seems to have been always a, a, a season that had a sad refrain to it. Because we really didn't understand the full value and the full understanding what Easter meant. We don't understand that Easter meant victory, yeah. not defeat. Yeah. Victory, yeah. not defeat. Yeah. As a child, we thought Easter was so bad. My Lord. We thought it was the end of everything. But God got a plan. Yes. Yeah. For we all know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are the call, the call according to his purpose. Only the believers does it work good for. All things work good for only the believers. For the good. Corona is working for our good. Oh, we may not see it now. We may not know it right now. But it's working. We got more praying now. More calling on the name of Jesus now. Yes. He has surely given the opportunity if we have not taken it. Yes. Salvation is like the smoking board. It's all fixed. Look, when they fix the smoking board, they lay it all out. They don't know who's coming to them. But it's ready. It's already laid out. If you don't come in, your fault. Yeah. <clears throat> the scriptures in Matthew the 28th chapter yeah. make a reference to a time shortly after Christ's resurrection from the dead. All right. The story goes it was ending of the week and beginning of the Jewish Sabbath day. And it was the beginning of the first day of the week yeah. that Mary and, 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 and Mary Magdalene came to the tomb looking for Jesus. They had not had time to do a funeral. The first time was at the Passover beginning when everything had to come to a halt. Everything was fulfilled on that day. Everything came by that dawning. Uh -huh. The resurrection uh -huh. had taken place. Uh -huh. Amid all the doubts and fears, against all the traps and tricks, the resurrection happened anyway. Uh -huh. It was the dawning of the first day, wasn't it? Yes. yes then there was a, a witness uh -huh. that met there at the tomb. When he saw Mary Magdalene and Mary, the other Mary, he told him, said, look, you look for Jesus. Why are you looking for Jesus? Dead among the living. Right. And you kept on talking. He's not here. Not he is risen. <laughs> Everything is based on he is risen. The defeat of death grip. Jesus had told him, said, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? So many prophecies were fulfilled on that day. That's when the light shone out of the darkness of that tomb. That's when he became the bright to our knowledge and morning star. On the sixth day. Yes. Out there on the cross of Calvary. Said three words that resonate in my mind. Yeah. Talk about it. Let me know I don't have a, a, a fight to fight. I 
I don't have a victory to win. He says, it is finished. On that seventh day, just like his father, did all the things he had to do in six days' time. But on that seventh day, he rested. Can't you see Jesus? Not everybody thinks he's dead. He gets in the grave, resting. In the tomb, resting. God is able. God is He rested until early. Early that Sunday morning. He got up out that grave. Went on to do what he said he would do. He said, meet me in Galilee. Yes, sir. The Bible says there was a mount there. He had appointed him to meet him. When he showed up at the, at the, the mount, he met all the disciples and he made a proclamation. He said, all power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth. He proclaimed it. He still got the power. Let me tell you, he told you in the book of the seven seals. Oh. Who I am. So if anybody want to know who I really am, tell us. Tell him I'm the champion. Tell them who I am. Tell them what I did. Tell them I'm the that was dead. I got death and hell in my hand. I got corona in my hand. I said I got corona in the palm of my hand. I got the whole wide world in my hand. The little bit of neighbor in the palm of my hand. I got the church and God in my hand. I want somebody to be a witness. Go and tell somebody. Tell somebody to see these things. And social distancing will not be the ones who tells Corona to cease and desist. Because God got Corona in the palm of his hand. I'm the champion of the cross. I'm even more champion than David, the king who killed Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. Went out to battle with the Philistines. Israel on one side, Philistine on the other side. Goliath was in the middle, and he was talking trash to all of the Israelites. They were all afraid. So Goliath told them, "Listen, if I kill somebody, send me. If I kill him, y'all become my servants. But if he kills me," I'll be your servant. Everybody will be your servant of the Philistine camp. They were all afraid. Abinadab and Shaman, all of the brothers of David. And Saul the king was shaking in their boots. But David walked up, came to do a job, bring some food out. And he heard the great commotion. And he saw them rattling and shaking. He said, What's going on around here? Goliath the champion has challenged all the Israelites. And they were afraid, church. They said, well, let me go out to this Philistine, this uncircumcised giant, and tell him whose side I'm on. He may be a champion, but I got God on my side. And he went out in the battlefield. He defeated the giant Goliath. On top of it and cut his head out. And I thought about that. You never saw a pretty monster. All monsters are hideous. But if you cut his head off, you can handle it better. So David cut his head off because they children and fear at the face. They were afraid of the face. David took the head of Goliath, held it up. I've been reminded of the story. There was a family that back in the days when we didn't have air conditioning. Somebody
somebody that got sick in the family. And they were trying to make it to the doctor's office. And while they were going down to the doctor's office, they had the windows down, trying to get a little air. But by that time, a horn had moved in the window. Flying all around the children was screaming and crying. Trying to kill the hornet. Somebody in the hornet that was laying on daddy's back and he stung daddy. After he stung daddy, they were still hollering and crying. And daddy told him, Look, stop them crying. Don't cry no more. He said, We've already hit the hornet. And when he stung me, he left his finger in me. So he can fly all and want to fly. And he can't do us no harm. That's just like saying that Jesus had death and hell in his hand. He had the peace to it. Grace, where is your victory? Death, I got this thing there. You can't do my children no harm. But they can't be afraid. You got to be strong. Believe in the power of God. Believe that I can. I love that people find the grave where they put him in. 